Hello, 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 hello. That kind of shocked me coming in and I thought it was going to be a commercial first. But listen, I am Carissa B from Life Talk TV show. I am excited to be here. And listeners, Kingdom Builders from across the world, thank you for being here literally in my house. Another episode or another segment of Life Talk TV. Learning to ignite your faith every day. Listen, there's so many amazing things that's going on in the world, but I want to just talk about something um, a little bit more positive. And before we do that, I want to get into a scripture. So, you know, I got to put my glasses on y'all. Y'all know how, how I do it, because if I don't, I'm going to be reading a passage and it ain't going to be none of the words that's on there. So let me read. And then we're going to get into, I have an amazing, wonderful woman of God that will be with us today. We're going to be fellowshipping and I'm totally, totally excited. But we are coming from Proverbs 31. And the topic today that we're going to be, one of the questions we're going to be talking about is a mother's love. I'm so excited about this because when I, the information, the FYI information I'm going to give y'all after this is going to explain why I'm excited about that. So we're coming from Proverbs 31, 25 and 26. Y'all, I'm looking down. Here's my Bible, okay, y'all? Because I don't want y'all to think that I'm looking down um, and not reading off a book, you know, the Bible. It's important to have your Bible, even if you have it on a tablet, if you have it on your phone, if you have the notes on sticky notes around your desk or wherever you're at, to always make sure you have the word. You got to read the know the word for yourself. Amen and amen. So 25 says, Proverbs 31 and 25 says, She clothes with strength and dignity. She laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instruction with kindness. A man and a man that is talking about a mother's love where am i going with this is what you're trying to say well this is where i'm going with this two days ago or maybe yesterday last night i was surfing through facebook and i noticed that people were posting pictures of their daughters and i was like what is going on well i just recently found out it's national daughter's day i think that was last night or the day before not listen i'm sorry that i'm late but I want to do a shout out to all the daughters across the world. This is National Daughters Day on my segment. <laughs> can that happen? Yes, it can. Literally in my house, a lot of stuff happens. We, we get to do that. So that's just a shout out. Like I said, we're talking about the mother's love. So I just thought it, it, it connected somehow. But if it did, and, and if I missed it, I apologize. Not really. But anyways, let's move on. I'm excited about this woman of God that's going to be in our house today. This woman of God is located in Springfield, Massachusetts. Woo, woo! That's where I'm from, y'all. I'm telling y'all, when I heard that they were from the same area, it shocked me. Because every time I mention to somebody, I'm from Springfield, Massachusetts, they're like, where, where's that at? I'm like, in Massachusetts? Okay, where? Um, It's not close to Boston, but it's, in Mass <laughs> it's closer to the Hartford, Connecticut area than the Boston area. This woman of God is from London, England. She is a, um, she has a degree in social science and social working, BA of honors. She's a bestseller author and author of nine books. Listen, nine books, y'all. I have, I'm not going to lie to you. I got this card right here. And look, I got a couple of <laughs> words on that. I just don't have the time to write. But, but the amazing thing about it, I don't know if y'all know, but I'm always talking about this on the, my radio show and even on this show as well. God created words. God created words. He created knowledge. And so what an amazing, amazing gift to have the gift of writing and knowledge. Without further ado, we're going to bring in Miss Mercy Miles Jenkins. And I want her to correct me if I said her name wrong. Welcome, <laughs> no, welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you for that introduction. Um, it is a blessing to be here. I'm honored, Carissa B, that you asked me to be here on your show. So this is phenomenal. Uh, but to answer your question, 100%, yes. You you pronounced my name right. <laughs> Woo, listeners, I did it, y'all. Because <laughs> I'll be making up names. I'll be like, no, nah, she looked like a Sally. 
I'm gonna call her Sally. I know. It's not my name. <laughs> so, but I was like, I, I remember her name because we met. We actually met in Atlanta, Georgia, um, this past summer. I don't quote me on a month. I think it was maybe July or June or July time frame. Yeah. And we met at an award show. And ironically, we both were getting honored on the same day. So we're going to get it started from there. Tell us what you got honored for on that day. I got honored for the um, Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Wow. Yeah, that was nice. huge for me. Yeah. yeah, yes. And speaking of that, you are an entrepreneur. And I want to get started right there. Tell us how you got into it and what you do. Well, um, I got into entrepreneurship. Um, I had a love and passion for real estate. And so uh -huh. um, I quit my job. In okay. fact, it's two and a half years this month. Wow. And so I quit my job to do that. But then guess what happened? COVID happened, yep. right? Yeah. So COVID happened in March. Mm -hmm. And I had already laid off one of my team members mm -hmm. because um, the business was not bringing um, an income to really cover those expenses. Right. And so what happened is COVID happened and my husband got laid off, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm yeah. like, okay, Jesus, you're going to have to do something, right? right? So I prayed a prayer, Holy Spirit answered, and he told me to teach people how to write books. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happened. So from that very moment, I took action uh -huh. and put it out there into Facebook world and said, class starts on Monday. This was the right. first day. Who's in? And people began to respond. Wow. And we built that, um, we hit our first nine figures in nine months and we have been going on for a year and five months right now. Wow. Wow. I mean, God did quick. He did, you know, I'm, I know I'm, I stopped because I was, I was thinking about the obedience part of when we're walking, doing faith walk. That is important that when God tells you to do something or when he instructs you to do something or you ask him a question, he immediately, you know, answers you that you're, you act upon it. Because a lot of times as faith walkers or faith leaders or kingdom builders, how you want to label yourself, we tend to we hear God. He answers it. But then we want a first, second, third, fourth, fifth confirmation. And then it got to be from people. It's got to be um, it's got to be you open a book and you see it there and. <laughs> Um, and everything else. Was that process like that for you or you just immediately walked into it? Immediately. Praise God. Now, I See, did have a thought come up because uh -huh. immediately God spoke. I was going to like, you know, I was kind of like questioning it, right? I was like, yeah. are you like, really, like what? Like, <laughs> yeah. I had that kind of reaction like, where's this coming from, right? right. And then I told myself, um, I read a book, um, um, I think it's called like the five second rule. Mm. And I said to myself, do not judge it. You heard God speak, obey him. So uh -huh. the five second rule is this, is that we get ideas, God ideas all day, every day. Yeah. But within five seconds, if you don't act upon it or acknowledge it, <laughs> yeah. it's gone. It is. It's gone. Like yeah. all best intentions, uh -huh. it's gone. <laughs> it is. It is. So I knew that, and so because I knew that, I I said, "Don't do that." Put it immediately. Into it. So I didn't have a curriculum set up or anything. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I just said, "Class starts on Monday. Uh -huh. Who's in?" And then I figured out what I was going to do afterwards. Right. Right. I, 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 I love how you did it. And that's that's the design on right now. Usually I'm like, OK, um, let me pray about it. I need to have it mapped out and, you know, have at least a six month plan on something three months, one month, one week or something. But lately in the season that I'm in, um, I'm just responding quick. And I'm like, mm -hmm. OK, I, tr I trust you, God. So my response should be quick as well. Based on, you know, because I want to be obedient. And I want him to honor and be pleased with everything that we do when it comes to kingdom. 
And so I, I love like how you said that. And offer all the listeners out there, the, the viewers, as well as whatever you're doing, if you're hearing it, because some people like to be on here and just hear. So I'm like to view, view it. It's important that when God tells you to do something, an act of, um, or an ideal, immediately do it unless he tells you to wait. Like when he gives you the answer, he's going to tell you to wait for me or wait on me after. But if he doesn't, immediately do it and trust God in the process. And we're not going to say the process is going to be easy. We're not going to say that you're not going to doubt. We're not going to say that you're going to um, have your second, um, I, should I be doing this or not? What we're saying is just trust him in the process and just do it. And when when God tells you to do something, um, even the action after you do it, it, it immediately there's a response. You know, when you act upon it, God is like, OK, here you go. Here you go. There, 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 there. And you don't have to struggle so much or wrestle so much with yourself unless you're a type of person where you just kind of be overwhelmed about everything. And that's the worrying factor that you don't want to do. So I like how you said that about starting your business and your author of nine books. What was the process like and how did you get started in that? Well, I received the prophetic word that I would write books. Mm. And to me, that was like out of this world. Like I couldn't even, I couldn't even put the pieces together. Right. Um, so what I did is I began to seek out people that were authors. Yeah. Um, and Apostle John Eckhart was one of them. I went to his writer's conference and then I also hired a, um, a, a business book coach and she supported me to write my first book. And so that's how I wrote my first book. Mm -hmm. And um, ever since then, um, I laid it low. It wasn't something I was interested in. But then, like I said, when COVID happened, God was like, teach people how to write books. Yeah. And I'm like, do I even know how to do that? Like, really? Mm -hmm. But sometimes we don't realize the things that we've experienced, we might have done it once. Like I did my book once, uh -huh. but he was like, you can do it again and again, and you can teach people. Right. Like, okay. Wow. <laughs> Wow, that is amazing. You said you're a best um selling author. And what books were is what is all nine of them, or was there a certain one, or was it when you first started off, or you is are you going through that process right now? No, these are um two books that I was a part of an anthology. Um, okay. and so um one's called The The Journey to Greatness, mm. which I talked about. Uh, my chapter is on reinventing. So reinventing myself, I was um, a part of a cult mm -hmm. and I was in a cult for eight years. Right. And so when I left that place, I had to reinvent myself, okay? Because mm -hmm. I went through um, intensive brainwashing. And so right. I had to go through a process of repossessing my mind. Mm -hmm. And so I talked about that in that book. Wow. And I wanted, I was just about to tap into that when I was reading your um, bio, it says spiritual abuse. And, mm. and it's like, wow. Okay. Cause normally I'm talking about it on my radio and stuff that there's different types of abuse and spiritual one is, is real. And so um, can, is there anything that you could share about that and how important it is not to be um, in an atmosphere like that? Or if you're struggling with that and you know that there's some, like, what are the signs? Honestly, what are what are some of the signs? Okay, so many people are not really familiar with that terminology, spiritual mm -hmm. abuse. When I started talking about it, I was using the word church hurt. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah. as I grew, um, uh -huh. I realized it's not church hurt. Um, because if it was, then if I got hurt by my manager, then I should be talking about job hurt. So right. um, I removed that connotation to the word church because Christ died for his bride, the church. Mm -hmm. And right. it was an expensive price to pay. And so yeah. how dare we just kind of sling these words together, right? Yeah. So anyway, so um, it's called spiritual abuse. Why? Because... It's about somebody in a place of position, somebody mm -hmm. in a place of position and power that right. use the Bible, scripture verses, mm -hmm. their position of leadership to undermine your ability to think for yourself. Right. 
In other That's words, true. we have leadership to guide us, to mentor us, to train us, mm -hmm. okay? But then there's a level where it overrides our free yep. will. And we've now yeah. moved into the realm of control, mm. intimidation, yeah. Yeah. fear, okay? Yeah. So these are the signs that you're looking out for, okay? Mm. Um, yeah. And we have to be very careful not to get this mixed up with a strong leader or yeah. get this mixed up with um, being rebuked, mm -hmm. okay? Um, fairly rebuked. In other words, you did something, so you know you were right. wrong. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But right. Yeah. it didn't feel good to the ego. Right, right. And so because the ego don't feel good, the ego want to justify, the ego want right. to... Uh, put out a witch hunt and say they church hurt me and they and we're right. not looking at themselves right so yeah. those are some of the um the dynamics when we talk about spiritual abuse okay mm. but the, there were many sides i mean i i just put out some characteristics but right really really uh, the sign is where there's no freedom and there's no liberty for you to be who you are yeah okay okay to the extent yeah. Okay, because we come into the church and we are who we are and we're accepted, but we know we have to grow mature. So I'm not talking about right. that. Okay. Right. I'm talking about where you don't know if you uh, can turn around because mm -hmm. there's so much animosity, there's so much uh, mm -hmm. control, there's just so My much Lord. fear, you know. And so with within that environment, you take on mm -hmm. fear based thinking. Okay, that means that you do. anything yeah. you think of, it's mm. I don't want to. I don't want to turn around because I'm afraid. Okay, I don't know if I could mm. work because I'm afraid that leadership right. is not going to allow me. I don't know if I can start a radio show because everyone else is gonna right to it like an extreme. Okay, right. now we all want to be right. accepted and loved by our, our friends and our peers, and there's a level right. of you know. It is. Um, Friends say, no, nah, I'm not with that. Okay. That's yeah. they're at liberty to say what they want. But we're talking about the fear that you really are afraid. You're riddled with fear to your stomach's turning over. This anxiety, um, hidden, hit, you know, uh, hedged up in your whole entire body system, right? Yeah. Because you're yeah. afraid. Yeah. So we're talking about tremendous fear. And that type yeah. of environment is toxic. Toxic, if yeah. it was in a relationship with a partner, we would say that's toxic. Yeah, right? you you're right. Get out of that relationship, right? You're right. So that's you're when right. we can see the abuse. When we can say, wait a minute, if this was a domestic relationship, mm. you're not allowed to go anywhere. Wow. Unless you tell me. Wow. Come on. I don't like your friends and family. They can't come to this church. They can't be around you. It's gonna contaminate your calling. Um, wow. When it gets to the extreme levels of you don't know if you're making a good decision or a bad decision right. and you're afraid right. of the consequences of both. So yeah. you're stuck, you're paralyzed and you that's do good. nothing. Okay. Mm. That's when you realize that your mind is not your own and you're not making free will decisions. That ability yep. to do that has been taken away. Mm. And that's what brainwashing mm. is. When yeah. you no longer have your free will to make a decision. Yes. And so the programming you have is always based on fear. You're relying on the information mm -hmm. of fear and control. Now yeah. you start to agree with that and do that. Just like, um, mm -hmm. you, you know, Stockholm syndrome, where, um, for example, if somebody's been kidnapped, and sex trafficked, okay? Right. They begin to be in this relationship with him, mm -hmm. him the drug dealer, um, yeah. with um, the kidnapper, and they begin to, for survival mechanism, they begin to mm -hmm. accept it. Right, and right. They begin to um, um, not only accept it, defend it. That's right, they you're right. Defend that system. Okay, because mm -hmm. there's nothing else for them. They've lost all hope and they defend it. Okay, right. And so that's that was the level of where I was at when wow. I was defending it. 
and I could no longer see that there was anything wrong. In the beginning, I could, but the longer right. you stay, the more that you are consumed and you're taken over yeah. and you can't see anything wrong with it because you've invested too much. Right, right, right. You're right. And then sometimes I know with I know what with mine, mine was like, okay, you're not loyal. Like I literally would sit, you know, or stand in the mirror and I'm putting my stuff on, getting prepared for church. You're not loyal. Look, you're complaining. Look, you're crying. Look, I mean, I would literally kind to I'd be coaching myself to feel a certain way because I was like, I, I don't want to go back here. I feel like I'm dying. But I was like, okay, you need to just suck it up. You say you're a lower person, but you're not showing that. Like it's like you use reverse, reverse psychology on yourself to make yourself feel okay for the moment, just to be able to endure to get in the vehicle, go to go to the place where you're worshiping at, and you know that. I mean, you're literally sitting there. You're still. Matter of fact, you'll do stuff in the ministry, and as you're doing it, and you know, okay, God, I know you called me for something more than this. I know this was, you know, when I didn't know who I was, but now I know, but just still allow them to dictate to you who you are in Christ, even how to do what he tells you to do. Like I said, I, I, I feel you on that. When I seen that, I was like, man, finally somebody's talking about it because honestly, the church tends to hide a lot of stuff. We're not transparent and we're not real about this really happens in ministries. It happens in ministries a lot of times. And it's important that if you feel like you are um, in 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 that fear factor, if you feel like there's now, like you said, there's a fine line. You know, there's a fine line, so you got to use that fine line. But you can tell the difference. You can literally tell the difference when you are being um, taken advantage. When you feel like you said that fear factor is you're even even when it, you realize church is coming up, like two three, three days later, you're like, oh, gotta go to church, you know, and you're like psyching yourself up three days prior to going to church because you already know that you're going to be um in, in a fear factor and and like you said you're defended even when people say well you know are you sure you, you're not doing too much they shouldn't be doing that to you or you know even when if your spouse is saying something you're defended because you feel like that's some sense of loyalty or something because you're afraid you're afraid. So I, I love how you speak on that. And y'all need to go out and get that book along with the other nine books. And I know that you have a business where you help people create um, words and, 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 and put them into a book and become, um, I think that to me, I think that's a gift. I'm not saying, you know, biblically it says it's a gift, but I think it's a gift because not everybody has the ability to create words and they make sense. And um, people can read it and get inspired by it. So with your process, do you have a process um, of how to create inspiration or create knowledge? It just depends what kind of book you're writing. And if you if you do, how can you tell somebody that's wanting to do a book but don't know how to go about? Is there a certain um, way to start? I, of course, I don't get in touch with you. But what was your process like? Okay. So I think you asked me a free part question. <laughs> I do. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure. I come That's up okay. I'm just trying to make sure that I answer the question. Uh -huh. All right. So, um, yes, so I do have a process and there is a process to writing your book. Now right. there's several types of books. Okay. Yes. There's several types and we know that there's several genres, right? right? And so you want to definitely do some research into the genre that you're writing in. OK, mm -hmm. so the genre that I was writing in was um, Christian inspiration okay? right. um, Christian self growth, personal mm -hmm. growth. OK, and so you want to find out what has really been written on your subject matter. OK, right. and from what angle have people have already written? Yeah, and then also, what is the opportunity for me here? Is there an opportunity for me mm -hmm. here to actually expound on an angle? that people haven't looked at. So one of my books, I've written five, um, five books on one subject, okay? And that's the subject of spiritual yeah. abuse. And they're all from right. various different angles, okay? So one of the angles, the last one I wrote was um, Seven Steps to Spiritual Abuse Recovery, okay? Mm -hmm. So there might be topics on spiritual abuse, but maybe not enough on the recovering part. 
Okay. Right. So there goes the opportunity. Right. So that's what you definitely want to do in terms of mm -hmm. what should you write about is doing the research on the subject matter itself mm -hmm. and figuring out what is it that you have to bring value to the table? How are you mm -hmm. adding to the discussion? Okay. And what has right. God really given you? So the second part yeah. to your question was that you said that you felt like it was a call. Really, you said it first. Um, about you feel like it's a call and it's a gift, okay? Right. It certainly is. And that's where I I teach um, mm -hmm. when it comes to supporting people to write their book. I come from the place of who I am in my calling and my assignment. And so I've been right. assigned and commissioned. Um, my, my clients would say the midwife, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because that's I'm supporting them to birth, okay? Right. So my assignment is to support them to birth um, their words, the message that God has given them. Mm. So therefore there is um, a treasure that's on the inside of them and they're not mm. quite sure how to release it and to bring it that's out. True. Okay? Um, and actual fact, they are the gift to the world holding mm. more treasure. Mm. Okay. Right. And it needs to be placed and condensed into a book right. format so that it can mm. bless the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, right. um, so it is a gift. It is a gift. Um, mm -hmm. uh, their tongue, I, um, in the book of Psalms 45 verse one, it yeah. says that, um, um, you know, having the tongue of a ready writer. Okay. So ready mm -hmm. writer, somebody that's skilled. And so mm -hmm. some people say, well, I'm not necessarily skilled. I just journal a lot. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, but you have a passion and a desire to write, even if it's just for journaling, that's uh -huh. a type of gifting that you have. You just right. might not be a technical writer. OK, Makes you might sense. not be a technical writer, but you are a writer of some sorts. And I love that um, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. is our helper. Yes, so we depend on him to help us yeah. to write. That's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That so is he inspired men to write, yeah. and he still inspires men to write. Yeah, that's true. So where you feel like you're lacking in some areas, just mm -hmm. know that you have a helper. And so um, when I work with people, I really depend on the Holy Spirit to minister to them um, what type of book to write mm -hmm. and what angle. And we just pray we create a safe place for the birthing. Right. We call it the um, the birthing cave. Right. Um, it's a cave of seven days where we come in and we write our books. Mm -hmm. And so um, that environment is conducive. And lo and behold, people write like their books like in three days. I right. teach it in seven days. I have a process to write your book in Whoa. seven days. Right. But um, even like last week, we had mm -hmm. um, two guys finishing three days. And yeah, one yeah. of them, it was his, he had two days off. And during those three days, two right. days, he was called to work as a nurse. So, you know, that's like a 12 hour shift. Right, um, right. But he still wrote and finished his book in three days. Wow. Yes. My Lord. So, when I say we reach, we depend on the Holy Spirit to pour, yeah. I really mean that. <laughs> yeah. That, that is amazing. It's so, like I said, I don't know. I, sometimes, coming from the background that I came from, words just mean a lot to me. And I even, when I'm communicating, I'm like, you know, I have to walk, watch what you're saying, watch how you're saying it. Cause sometimes we use words the wrong way and stuff. So I'm always constantly thinking about words and how do I say it? Did I say it right? Is that a great adjective? What about the adverb? And I'd be very, <laughs> so sometimes when people talk to me, I hesitate to respond back. I'd be like, okay, give me a second. I want to absor absorb it so I can respond to you the right way. Because I just think, like I said, I just think that, that it is a gift. And, and honestly, when we start talking about who God is, we start using words like he's sovereign. He's a mighty. He's, he's a, I mean, those are words. And so an, an adoration unto him when we're writing our books, like you said, just depends on what, which way you're coming from. I just feel like we need to be cautious on what we say and how we, it's a process. Don't feel like you can just say anything you want and feel like God is going to honor that. I think it's just a process. And I think that, you know, words do matter and you have the ability to change somebody's life if you say what mm -hmm. God is telling you to say at the right time. And so I'm forever grateful for you being obedient to that because there is a lot, you know, with society, a lot of people are having to stay home and they don't have yes. an extra income or 
a way, an outlet to express their creativity. What better way to do like journaling or writing self growth for, I mean, just, it just depends on what direction or what are you feeling at the time. And so I, I commend you on that because not a lot of people um, do that anymore. A lot of people just get you know, computers and technology. Yeah, and this is from the point of view of IT. Everybody just want to go IT. Yeah, that's where the money's at. Yeah, let's go. You know, good and dandy. Praise God for you. But sometimes it's just good to pick up a pencil or a pen and a notebook and just start writing. Just pour out your heart as you, as you become healed. And it just, like I said, just depends on what direction you're going in. And I love what you do in that. And also you are a co-pastor. So how did y'all get start? Well, first of all, what is the name of your church and how'd y'all get start in y'all ministry? Okay. So the church is called the Christ Church International. And so there's various uh-huh. different branches and the founders is Apostle James Duncan and Apostle Donna Duncan. And they're based in uh-huh. New York, Brooklyn. Um, And so we have uh, the branch in Springfield. So we have the Springfield Mm -hmm. branch, there's Boston branch, there's branches in Florida, there's branches in different different places and cities um, in the Caribbean, um, in Ghana, and in the UK. All right. Um, right. So how we got started that, very interesting. Okay, so I'm going to give you the scoop. Is that okay? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'll take a minute, but I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. Hey, I'm gonna get <laughs> so here's the deal. So remember I told you that I was in the cult. Okay. So what happens is most people that go through that experience, especially if it was extremely violent and traumatic, okay, to yeah. the brain and yeah. to the emotions, right? It gets yeah. to the place where they don't want nothing to do with mm-hmm. God, right? In His church, yeah. They don't, they're like deep. That's the that's the community that's de-churched. Like they done right. Right. divorced themselves, took off the rings, and said, "I'm yeah. done with it." So that yeah. was me. Okay. Mm-hmm. So for five and a half years, I was mm-hmm. doing my own thing, living my own kind of way. There was right. even a point that I even said, "God does not exist." Wow. So I done fr- I done thrown at the baby. And the bathwater. Right. I don't throw it all out. Okay. Because I was like, never. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's such a God, this wouldn't happen. Okay. So I was stuck in anger. I was stuck Mm -hmm. in um just frustrated and stuck. Okay. So five and a half years, um, the Lord allows me to do what I want to do. And then he starts wooing me back. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so uh, one of my apostle friends called me, we was talking, and she said, Mercy, you know you can't keep running. Right, right. You're a prophet, and you can't keep Mm. running from the Lord. Now, when she said that, it was so foreign to me Uh that, in other words, I had sunken so deeply into the world, it Mm. was foreign to me. Right, right. And I said to her, don't say that. I said, don't ever say that to me. I said some, and not in the rude, I mean, like she's an elder of mine. She's a mentor of mine. Right. Like with total disrespect and dishonor, right? Because I've got mm. no filter. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. So that moment, God began to work in me. The, the, the words were sung and everything in my life began to change from what she said. So mm. I was getting more deep in depression. Right. And then um, this that was January. This is now March. And mm. I was talking to my sister on the phone from England. And she said, you know what? I'm sick and tired of you. Okay. Mm. You're like a sleeping lion that needs to be awake. Right. And she said, I'm, I'm done. So she said, what I need you to do is download Periscope, mm. the app. And right. you need to find some good teachings and just listen to a good preacher, okay? Because right. I was not listening to nobody, right? Of course, I was right. criticizing everyone. I was gunning everyone down, all the rest mm-hmm. of it. Because church right. people, her, her people, I'm sorry, do what? Her people. Her people. Yep. So I said, okay, so 
I didn't do it. Two weeks later, she um, checks on me. Did you do it? I said, no. She said, right, you're doing this on the phone right now. Mm. Okay. She said, um, who do you want? Who do you like? And I said, um, Apostle John Eckhart or Apostle Elizabeth Harrison Burroughs. Those are the mm. only two people that I trust in right. ministry, right? right? So um, Apostle Elizabeth Harrison Burroughs was not on Periscope. Mm. Apostle John Eckhart was. Mm-hmm. She said, start listening to him right now. Right. Okay. So for two days straight, I'd listened to him. And on the second day, he said, I'm going to be in Boston in two days. Wow. And I said, what? What? Yeah. I said, this is God. Uh-huh. This, is, this is God, right? Yeah. So I said, I've got to be there. I'm going to have to tell my manager. I've got to take the day off. I, right. I don't care the short note. I don't care what they do. Right. I'm going to be there. I'm driving the two two hours to be there. So I did. And that's when things changed. Mm-hmm. And so it was an activation. Um, it was Boston Reset. And they had an activation and a prophet ministered to me and said, God said, you keep asking, why did it happen? And he was mm-hmm. talking about you went through hurt, you went through this. Right. And he said, God keeps saying, you keep saying this. Why did it happen? Or why did it happen? But what God says is, what was the lesson? Mm, yeah. 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 And when I heard that, I just broke. I said, you mean to say I was in school, Holy Ghost? I said, but you never told me I was a student. <laughs> <laughs> you never told me that I was there for the mere fact. I yeah. was supposed to see what you don't do. Don't do. Yep, yep, yep. I just thought, like, it's unfair. And then it was, but there's an actual purpose because I knew God sent me there. I could not deny that. That I cannot yeah. deny. Right. Okay, so it didn't make sense, which is why I was like, forget you, God. I'm going to live my own life. Uh-huh. Okay. But the understanding came. And he said, he said, God said that it was a teaching for the young priests. Mm. So I knew God was saying, I taught you so that when you people come up in ministry, that you will teach them what not to right. do. You needed that lesson. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so I said, okay, I'm done. So what happened is out of that conference, they birthed a church. Wow. So our church is covered by Apostle John Eckhart. Yeah. And so when they birthed that church, I would drive from Springfield all the way to Boston uh-huh. on Sundays to wow. participate in that church. Yeah. And so as I got healed and cleaned up or whatever, then the Lord said, it's time for me to become a leader. Wow. And get ordained. And I was like, oh, God. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, I can't. I just can't. But he was so good. He removed the anger. He removed the resentment. Yeah. He gave me such um, loving and caring leadership. Yeah. Okay, that nursed me back to health. health. Yeah. And I was able to see that they were healthy leaders in themselves. Yeah. That it inspired me to yeah. want to be in service. Okay. So I was like a soldier uh-huh. that was AWOL. <laughs> Right. And they had to drag me in. But when I came in, I was like, they were like, promotion, promotion, promotion. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? You guys are such good people. You've inspired me. Uh-huh. That, and my life has changed, right? My, my thought process has changed. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and obey God. Mm-hmm. So they made it easy for me yeah. to obey God. Yeah. My so Lord. that's how the church was birthed. So yeah. from one ordination to another till now it's time for you guys. You can launch out um, and um, start ministering your area. Wow. Wow. Well, amen. and Amen. It, our, our stories are kind of similar a little bit, <laughs> but especially in the, the oh Lord, do I have to, <laughs> I was getting comfortable just kind of just being this, you know, the servant that was in the Invisible. background, you know, hey, yeah. <laughs> That's what I say. I, I love being invisible. Me you don't too. have to call me for nothing. I don't have to come to the front for nothing. I'm good. Right. All the way in the back. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, then, you know, then this is okay now. You're ready now. And then you're like, oh. 
And then you'd be like, okay, but you're right to, to go through the process with the caring leadership. That is a must. Cause sometimes people go, they want to go back and draw near God and walk in their calling. And they still um, get under a leadership that is very still harsh or reminds them of their, you know, what they used to go to. And so we have to be cautious on that as well. Um, if it's familiar to you, and this is just my opinion. I'm not, you know, I'm just telling you what I did. Um, I ran. It became familiar to me. I ran because I, I, I knew then, okay, it was familiar to me because I had not dealt what I needed to deal with in that process of that hurt. Whatever was going on at that church at that time that I was getting hurt by. So I ran and and we, we're, we're in a different ministry. Like the ministry we're in now, we're in prophetic. And I knew that was caught in the prophetic realm. But for some reason, the ministries I was always in, they it's like they kept it like, like in a box, like they taped it up and you couldn't use it. You're too loud. Don't sing loud. Don't shout. Don't do this. Don't do that. It was like, and, um, but in the ministry I'm now, I'm allowed to be just me and, and expand, you know, while the teaching is going on, you know, and everything. And so I'm excited about this. I understand what you're saying about that. And you have an amazing husband that you are co-pastoring together, correct? Okay. Yes. So, yeah, awesome. As and that's Pastor uh, well, Apostle yeah. Jenkins, because they both have more than one. Oh, no, we're not apostles. Couple. Okay. <laughs> Pastor. Okay. Pastor. All right. I sometimes, you know, sometimes I'm like, ooh, okay, well, um, I'm just going to say it then. But yeah, pastors of yes. the church in Springfield, Massachusetts. And now when I come home to visit, I can come and fellowship because I oh, already know. The last Certainly. time we were there, we were going for my grandmother's funeral. And um, we stayed mm -hmm. until I think it was Monday or Tuesday. And I wanted to go to a church, but I was like, I do not know none of these people around here. <laughs> <laughs> and you know some of the churches like when i was growing up and i was so young when i left i was like i don't know who does what or who where i don't even know what where to go so now when i go back to springfield massachusetts i can tell my family um that there's oh, yes. a church as well that they can go to because um we're supposed to be spreading the, the good news encouraging mm -hmm. our family members and whoever we know to go into fellowship and so um, I'm definitely going to be doing that. But y'all have been married. You have children. Um, my question is, is how do you balance it all? Oh, it's a juggling act. <laughs> <laughs> it is a yeah. juggling act. It's, it no, it's like no joke. And it's not always pretty, right? Yeah. It's not always pretty. It's not always looking perfect. Yeah. Um, but you do what you can do with your resources, right? And yeah. so um, family, family is first. Um, yeah. But we learned that lesson. That was yeah. a lesson that we learned from right. our previous experience yeah. because um, the family was attacked heavily. Um, the family was attacked for um, just bonding was attacked. Yeah. They didn't like it when we bonded with our children. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't like the way that we disciplined our children. They didn't mm -hmm. like when we had family days on Sundays. Yeah. So yeah. The family is under attack. And yeah. so one of the things that we had to do this time around is reinstitute normal, normal values. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so just spending time with the kids, going on vacations. Yeah. Um, we do that every year. Yeah. Every year, even in the pandemic. I was uh -huh. like, now where can we go? We drove yeah. all the way to the to the Canada border. Wow. <laughs> just wow. so that we could feel like we took an international trip. Yeah, yeah, and um, and, and keep the consistency of going away and doing things as family because that was something that was heavily, um, heavily ridiculed for, right? Um, but spending time with family is a must, mm -hmm. um, and we know it's a must because when you're doing the work of ministry, okay, that's yeah. your first line of defense, right? Okay, and so right. if you right. don't take care of the family, you don't nurture the family, then that's where the enemy will find the loophole. Yeah, yeah. And we have five sons, Whoa. five sons. So oh, the oldest God. is, yeah, 23. The youngest is 11 gone on 12. Or is he really 12? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes, oh. but we have five sons. And so in order for them to work alongside with us, yeah. Um, yeah. you've got to make sure that you build each person. Yeah. You're right. Wow. 
And then the businesses, they're all in, um, they participate in the businesses. Like right. even my business now, my, my 12 year old, he does um, my social media management. Right. He That's does that. Awesome. Yeah. That, and then the real is- estate business, um, uh-huh. they're all involved in that. Right. They, they do more of the work than I do right now, which is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely awesome. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because when I'm doing too many things, like you uh-huh. said, how do I balance it all? Delegation is like key. It is. And getting everybody on board with the vision is like yeah. key. So that's what we've had to do is like cast the vision yeah. Um, see, the name of my company is called Legacy Driven, Legacy yeah. Driven Consulting and Publishing. And right. then the real estate part is called um, Legacy Property Solutions Group. And so we really tie in that word Proverbs 13, 22, which says mm-hmm. that it's a wise man. Some translations say it's a good man that builds yeah. inheritance for his children's children. So that's right. where the family has been really, really important in the midst of ministry, in the midst of building businesses. Right. Family is all um is an integral piece of it. Right. It's a centerpiece, if you will. I yeah. mean, Christ is the centerpiece. He's the group yeah. that keeps us all together, no uh-huh. doubt. But um, like you said, in terms of how, how do we balance, we're all participating in right. uh, many of the activities. No, no, that totally makes sense. And I love that. I love uh, when families come together and work together in unification. Um and you're speaking volumes on that. And, it's, and for the, li- the listeners and the viewers out there, listeners, we're letting you know it's okay to do that. It's okay mm-hmm. to do that. Like I said, I understand you when you came from the church point of view, you know, even when we were going through what we we're going through, you know, I was doing so much in the ministry that I forgot my kids. Like I forgot that they were a part of me. And a lot of times when um, like my oldest daughter my youngest one, I had, I had children. Some of my children are, you know, I have an eight year old. So <laughs> when she was born, they assumed that it was my daughter's child because I was, you know, either on a stage doing praise and worship or doing something else or mm-hmm. sing with my sisters in a different state. So they assume that was hers. So I kind of, it's like I left them behind and didn't even realize it that I left them behind until I came back and some devastating stuff happened. I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? And I realized then that it was important. I said, well, Lord, if you want us to do this, if you want me to stay, um, it's got to be whatever you put us to do. It's got to make sense to where we're all involved. I'm never going to leave my children behind. I'm going to make sure my husband's standing right next to me because there were a lot of times I would leave him because I had to go do a ministry somewhere that, oh, it's not enough room in the car or you can't go here mm-hmm. or this is, a you know, and I, I was like, but how does, and I thought it was okay because that's what the, you know, that's what they taught us in the church. But that is that is not healthy at all. It's not healthy for your marriage or your relationship with your children. And God honors it when you bring everything together in unification. So I love how you said that. I did not know you had five boys, but um, <laughs> that is a lot. But God always gives us what we can handle. So I'm glad you have the five boys and I only have four kids. But <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot. I told my husband, I said, I'm glad I had three daughters and one boy because I do not think I can handle um, for something. I think it's um, because one of my sisters, she's got a lot of more boys than girls. And I said, girl, you got you got a special anointing on you because you're dealing with men, you know. And I said, I feel like always that I'm missing it when I'm talking because my son is 21 now. So I always feel like I'm missing it when I'm talking to him because I was like, oh, I don't I'm not a man. So I don't even know how to. You know, what do I say? How do I go about? Should I hug him? Should I not? You know, <laughs> but my husband, thank God, my husband's very active in his life. And so he goes to him. And when he comes to me, I said, no, go to your dad. Um, When y'all done, you can come back to me. And my husband, <laughs> you, me, you know, but for girls, you get to girly it up and let's go out, you know, and everything else. So I commend you on that. It takes a mighty woman of God to um, raise men. Of God, it's a, a special anointing for that, and so I'm 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 astonished. I did not know, and you look good. Yeah, and, I, and I'm definitely it. a boys' mom. I'm definitely a boys' mom too. Like I'm wow. a real boys' mom. Like go go out. Um, mm-hmm. I help them in their in the um their thinking in terms of um co- being competitive, being right. the best, being a go getter. Right. Um, going for the best, going for gold, all of that stuff. It's just hilarious because, you know, that's a part of who I am too as well. So I really do feed that in them. 
Um, and they they just give me pride. I mean, I just love them. They're just great. Maybe praise God, praise good. So how can we, I know you mentioned it before, but how can we get connected to you if you wanted to um, uh, do, use your services, your social media platforms? How can we get connected? Awesome. So <clears throat> my website is um, here trailing at the bottom, legacydrivenconsulting.com. You can right. check me out there. You can also um, follow me on Facebook, All right? This is where I spend the most amount of time. Facebook, right. then Instagram, but I'm right. still learning Instagram, right? So, <laughs> so oh, Jesus. I'm still learning that, but we are over there. Um, and we also have a Facebook business page under my right. name. Awesome. So everything is really my name. You can find me under my name, Mercy Miles Jenkins. Um, but you can reach out to me on Facebook um, or Instagram, and you can read and find out more about me on my um, business page on Facebook and mm -hmm. website as well. Awesome. Awesome. Listen, I enjoyed this conversation. I didn't know we had so much in common, um, especially our background history. Um, and I thank God for you and your ministries. Like I said, we met in Georgia um, at an award show <laughs> and I'm sitting, I'm laughing like, wow, God, you're so awesome and creative how you allow kingdom builders to meet each other. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't going, expecting to meet anybody. I was like, okay, I'm going down here, you know, cause I know Zorn, we I've known him for a couple of years. We okay. had a book tour together and, mm -hmm. um, and everything else. And I was like, okay, well, you know, I'll go down there, you know, I would love to be honored. And, you know, I went down there not thinking anything else. I was like, I, I'm not used to people honoring me. So I was already scared about that. So, <laughs> so when I went down there and met some wonderful women of God and, you know, of course yourself, and we took our picture together and everything else. And I was like, when you initially started talking, I said, England. <laughs> and then I was like, How do you know? I said, cause you know, we went to travel to England. I love England. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. I just love England and everything about it. And so um, when we talked, that's what I, we were talking about. One of the questions, you know, that I asked you and stuff. And I said, wow. And then when you said Springfield, Massachusetts, I said, what? You know, so I know. God. That was insane. Even for us, that was insane. I was like, what? Yeah. No so, way. This is the word. Okay. So even after that, we talked and we was like, you definitely have to connect. We have to connect. And I believe God is going to connect us with more stuff. I really believe mm -hmm. that because there's no way that he would allow us to go all the way to Atlanta, Georgia, not even our <laughs> homes, <laughs> mm -hmm. be in the same area, you know, to, you know, I'm from there and you stay there. And then, you right. know, we're doing this and everything else. I believe God is going to do a lot more with us together and our, our families and everything. And I appreciate you coming on live TV uh, show Forever grateful. Listen, I need to go out and support this woman of God. I'm telling you, if you're ready to write, if you're ready to do some self-growth, if you're ready to inspire some other people, reach out and touch her. You won't be disappointed. I enjoyed this thoroughly. Thank you so much for coming on Life Talk. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. This is a blessing. I had a fabulous time. And uh, Carissa B, it's an honor. I mean, I'm just so excited that, like you said, the Lord connected us. It just blew me away. Like, for yeah. days. Okay, because yeah. uh, Springfield is not not known to a lot of people, so yeah. it was a blessing. It really blessed my heart, and I love the work that you're doing. Right, mm -hmm. truly, um, you know, to have a big family and to do ministry business, uh -huh. and to see your whole entire family just growing in the gift things that God has given them, it's encouraging. It thank really you. is inspiring. And so I just want to say thank you for just you being you and, you know, um, allowing us to see what you're doing with your girls in particular. I'm like, they're so young. Like, really? Yeah. This is phenomenal. I can't wait to see, like, in the next five years, 10, 15, like, who they're going to blossom into becoming because yeah. you gave them a great head start. Mm. This is fabulous. My Lord. Heartsies, first of all. Thank you, Heartsies. Thank, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I thank you for the encouragement. Like I said, we do what we do because I love God and I want to honor him. But when people say kind words such as you, it encourages us a lot because sometimes mm -hmm. you can feel like you're alone doing stuff. Even with your large family, you can still feel like right. you're alone, y'all. You still can feel that. So thank you so much for the encouragement. Thank you so much 
for being here, fellowship with me, because you didn't have to do it, but you did. So I'm forever, forever grateful. Blessings to your ministry and your family in the name of Jesus. Until next time, y'all, listen, y'all need to come back so we can fellowship, so we can cry, so we can listen to some music. No, I'm just playing. So we can go fellowship (laughs) with one another in the name of Jesus. And and listen, God bless you. Listen, I need you to come back. I need y'all to come back. I need y'all to come back and fellowship with Carissa V on Life Talk TV. Learning to ignite your faith every day. God bless.